Hello, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is, is Paolo Bray. I'm the founder and director of Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth and the World Sustainability Organization. Uh, it is my pleasure today to start uh, this new webinar on circular economy and the role of fish meal and fish oil producers, the Siebel case study. Our special guest today is Mrs. Hind McAdam, Manager of Quality, Safety and Environment at Sibel SA, a major producer in Morocco. Let me also anticipate and remind you about the forthcoming webinar planned for the 21st of October, which will focus on uh, shark species, threats and status, the impact of fishing and finning, conservation legislation and initiatives. The World Sustainability Organization uh, was started on the wave of the positive experience and tangible conservation results of the Dolphin Safe Tuna project of the NGO Earth Island Institute, which saved millions of dolphins from potential bycatch in the tuna industry. I have collaborated with the Earth Island for over 30 years, and I'm currently the director of international programs of the Dolphin Safe project. WSO founded Friend of the Sea in 2008 and Friend of the Earth in 2018 to certify products and services which respect the marine and land environment. Over 1,000 companies from 100 countries have products certified by these standards. Let's try now and understand a bit more about fish meal and fish oil. Windsor provides a very clear definition of fish meal, a solid product obtained by removing most of the water and oil from fish and fish waste. Fish oil is instead the brown or yellow liquid extracted by pressing the fish or fish waste. Let's go more in detail and look at the comparison table providing us with the nutrient content of some fish meal, the three columns to the right, compared to some alternative plant feed. We notice in general uh, higher amounts of proteins, fats and fatty acids, of course, ash, iron, zinc, calcium, and the absence of fibers, of course. The use of herring as an industrial raw material started as early as about 800 after Christ in Norway, a very primitive process of pressing the oil out of herring by means of wooden boards and stones was employed. In the travels of Marco Polo, as written in the 14th century, a primitive form of fish meal was already described and fed to animals. An actual fish meal and fish oil industry developed in Northern Europe and North America from herring surplus catches. The oil was initi initially used mainly for leather tanning and production of soap and the residue as fertilizers. In 1910, fish meal started to be used increasingly as feed for farmed animals which needed a higher quality quantity of proteins, poultry, pigs, and fish. As aquaculture production grew, it became the main market for fish meal. In the 1970s, investigators discovered that Eskimos uh, in, uh, in Greenland and in Japan and, uh, and the Japanese population had very low rates of uh, cardiovascular diseases. It was then that the omega-3 supplements industry started. Since 2000, alternative origins have appeared, in particular the use of trimmings and bycats from processing of seafood for human consumption to make fish oil and fish meal. This greatly increased and it now represents 30 to 50 percent of the sources of fish oil. Other growing and promising origins are krill, insects, seaweeds, algae, and microbial fermentation. Processing plants for fish meal and fish oil are among the major ones globally. Fleets represent approximately 5% of total wild catch in the world without these, these forage fisheries uh, to produce uh, um, fish oil and fish meal. Without going into the details, these plants consist of a series of operations which aim at separating the water from the oil and dry meal by means of cookers, centrifuges, dryers, separators, and coagulators. 
We can better understand the effect of these processes by looking at the mass balance from an original 1,000 kilograms of raw fish at the top, 100 kilograms of oil and 212 kilograms of meal are on average produced. Fish meal and fish oil plants can have environmental impacts. These, for example, are figures for fuel consumption, electric power and water consumption of fish meal plants. Uh, modern factories can reduce fuel consumption by improving boiler efficiency, insulation of hot surfaces and by other means. A considerable number of equipment for waste heat recovery are today working satisfactorily in Scandinavia and other factories. As far as water consumption is concerned, it is mostly consumed for cooling and deodorizing and therefore efforts have been focused in this part of the processing to reduce water usage and increase efficiency. The major fish oil producing countries are Peru, Chile, USA, Morocco, with some major refineries and distributors in Europe, USA, Australia and Asia. This year, Chile has overtaken Peru as the largest fish oil producer in the world, reaching 88,000 tons during January to June 2020. Peru, in uh, second place, reported 75,000 tons of fish oil. If we look at the trends over time, we notice how Chile has gradually grown, in fact, since the 80s, while Japan's production of fish oil, which has been important in the 80s and 90s, has gradually to reduced to a secondary role. A peak of over 7 million tons has been uh, reached in the 90s. A reduction in the metric tons produced occurred over the years and current levels are slightly lower than 6 million tons. COVID-19 has mainly impacted the demand with a 20% reduction of fish meal from China, from the Chinese aquaculture industry. This led to a global 7% reduction estimated and in particular 16.5% reduction of production in Peru even though anchovies biomass is still healthy. To me, the most uh, striking trend in the fish meal and fish oil industry is the one showing how production of farmed fish and poultry have grown since the 90s, whilst their use of fish meal has decreased, or at least not increased so far, as you can see on the graph top right. This is certainly due to an improvement in efficiency. In fact, the improvement in feed conversion ratio has been impressive. As an example, carps are currently fed with one-tenth of the amount of fish meal that was used in 1995. This is an extremely good news when we consider in perspective the estimated growth in demand of aquafeed for different species, including tilapia and carps by 2025 as you can see from this graph in the darker green uh, areas. Fish oil and similarly fish meal comes mainly from anchovies and sardines, mainly fished in the southern eastern Pacific, from Manhattan, some krill, but also increasingly from trimmings of bycats of, for example, as you can see in this graph, tuna, salmon, and somehow cod, highlighted by the red dots. In fact, the percentage of fish residues as components of fish oil and fish meal has tripled since 2000 to become almost 40 to 50 percent of the total. This is a positive development in view of a more circular economy. And the recent study has estimated potential for further growth in usage of unutilized byproducts from aquaculture and fisheries into the fish meal and fish oil production lines. Feed composition has changed over the years, as we have seen, <clears throat> with plant proteins substituting fish meal and oil. Fish trimming is now composing almost 50% of, of this. Each 
alternative component has its pros and cons, but the industry trend is definitely towards improving efficiency and sustainability and gradually reducing the relative percentage of Y catch origin. According to a recent study, insect feed and microbial fermentation has potential to replace between 10% to 50% of the soy meal feed used in poultry and cattle applications, and in general to uh, contribute uh, possibly 200,000 metric tons of the uh, increase in fish meal demand, which is expected to be in total 500,000 metric tons. In order for companies to confirm the sustainability of the origin and of the processing of their fish meals, fish oils, feeds and omega-3, they can now turn to Friend of the Sea, the only certification which is also recognized by the national accreditation bodies and which can apply to all different ingredients, including plant-based. Friend of the Sea certification highlights those products which reduce waste and optimize usage of the fish parts. Currently, almost 500 companies from over 30 countries in the omega-3 fish meal and fish feed industry have products certified Friend of the Sea. Friend of the Sea, omega-3 and fish meal companies and products are widely present in the US, Norway, France, Peru, Canada, UK and Australia. Consequently, Friend of the Sea is considered as a leading standard of reference in omega-3 sustainability. Recently, some producers of alternative fish meals or meals for aquaculture uh, have also been certified. Uh, in this case, uh, Innova, a major insect meal producer with both the Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth uh, certification labels. In conclusion, the fish meal and fish oil industry is a precursor of the circular economy concept as fish surplus and trimmings were used already over 1000 years ago to produce oil and meal. For decades, the main source of fish meal has been wild caught, leading also to overfishing of some stocks. But forage fisheries are currently well managed within maximum sustainable yield and following ecosystem approach as shown by Friend of the Sea in previous webinars. Processing and usage optimization by farming companies, for example, improved feed, feed conversion index, as well as increased use of trimmings and bycats, have reduced the consumption of feed. Alternatives to fish meal, such as insects, algae, seaweeds, plant-based omega-3, microbial fermentation, are going to play a vital role in filling the expected 500,000 metric tons increase in demand to 2025 in a more sustainable way. Companies can highlight their engagement in sustainability by applying for Friend of the Sea and Friend of the Earth certifications. I will now invite uh, Mrs. Hind McCadden of Siebel to introduce to us her presentation. In the meanwhile, I will uh, also launch a poll that we have prepared today and which I invite you all to uh, vote vote to uh, the the poll uh, question is uh, today is which alternative to fish meal will help reaching forecasted increase in global demand the answers the possible answers are trimmings and bycats insects meal microbial fermentation seaweed and algae other plant based so i see that in a few seconds already over 16 people, participants have answered. So this is really appreciated. Thank you very much. And we will show the results uh, to everyone. Okay, now I will hide the poll from my view, at least. And I will pass 
the microphone to Mrs. McCadden. Hello, everyone, joining us on this webinar. Firstly, thank you, Friend of the Sea, for this opportunity to exchange with a large professional and scientific community around the world, especially in these difficult moments of pandemic. We are used with Friend of the Sea, and Friend of the Sea has accustomed us with its efforts for protection of ecosystem and its high level of communication about all tweets and best practices for saving biodiversity. So thank you again, Friend of the Sea, and good continuation in your future projects. Today, I will present Seabed Company, its compliance to international standards, before talking about its contribution as fish meal and fish oil in circular economy. Seabed is a Moroccan leader company specialized in valuation of sea products. It belongs to a gigantic industrial group, GBH, existing since 1948, accumulating large know-how in several business sectors like production and refining of vegetable oils, soft drinks and water, construction and real estate. In turn, Seabell exists since 1963, accumulating 57 years of experience in fishing, seafood, fish meal and fish oil production. Seabell employs around 1,000 people, achieving an annual turnover around 70 million USD. Seabell has three industrial sites currently operational, which are the site of Seabell 4, a cannery unit in Agadir, and two production plants of fish meal and fish oil. The first one is Seabell 1 in Tantan, and the second one, Seabell 2 in Agadir. Seabell practices fishing of small pelagic by a refrigerated seawater vessel operating in the port of Dakhla. In the same city, Seabell opens two new sites. The first is Canary with the help for canned fish with a valuation industrial pool of byproducts in fish meal and fish oil. And the second plant for freezing fish, lagoon fish. These two projects are planned to open in few next months. In numbers, Seabell Canary uses around 30,000 tons a year of raw material. This matches approximately 76 million cans a year based on statistics of 2019. This production is distributed among species according to figure 2, where 78% of production is canned sardines, 20% of canned mackerel, and only 2% shared between canned tuna and canned anchovies. The fish used comes from Moroccan Atlantic Coast, FAO 34, by person or pelagic trawlers. Viewing the increased demand on fishery products for food and also for aquaculture, production of fish meal and fish oil has been developed in last decades. Seabill factories have treated in 2019 around 70,000 tons of raw material. This allowed to produce in total 70,000 tons of fish meal and 5,000 tons of crude fish oil. As producer, packer and exporter of canned fish, Seabell products are consumed in the five continents. The main markets are located in Europe, USA, Africa, Middle East and Australia. These products are generally sold under private labels. Then 98% of fish meal produced is exported to the main destination like Germany, Spain, Turkey and Italy. In second level, there are the markets of USA, Saudi Arabia and Japan. This fish meal is sold for feed and aquaculture. Likewise, fish oil is imported by many countries like Latin America, Spain, Germany, France and Malaysia. This fish oil is sold crude for aquaculture sector or for supplementary processing before to be used for human consumption. As you know, in order to export, factories have to be certified. The oldest and most important certifications are related to quality management and assurance of food safety, like IFS and VRC, which have been maintained by Seabell since 2003. Then, from 2010, the sales markets demanded social accountability linked to the requirements of ethical trade, improvements of working conditions, and respect of human rights in the business and in the supply chain. In this context, Seabell Canary is a member of SIDEX and aim for a BACA initiative and comply with their requirements. The first friend of the C certification is date 2012. This certification was made to meet the needs of customers who have developed a new criterion in choice of uh, products in markets based on respects of environment and social accountability. 
later and from 2014, compliance with specific standards with requests like kosher certification, gluten-free for allergens and intolerance, bio for vegetable ingredients used in recipes, and halal certification. Without forgetting, of course, the famous MSC certification, which concerns responsible fishing. The big challenge for management of certification is maintaining the standards over the years and keeping a constant listening to change in markets requirements. As you can see on the presentation, in 2017, we started management of certification in unannounced audits for safety standards and in semi-announced audits for all audits about social compliance. We know also that in future years, we will work more on uh, compliance to fair trade, allergies and intolerance, waste reduction, recycling and energy efficiency, and sourcing responsibly. For fish meal and fish oil processing, the first certification was made in 2016, Assurance of Feed and Food Safety via GMP Plus and ISO 22000. Later, in 2017, Sites of seabed processing fish meal and fish oil were certified according to Marine Trust that certifies responsible practices for fish meal and fish oil producers. For lowering demands of markets which require the environment and social compliance of products, fish meal and fish oil plants were friend of the sea certified in 2018. Subsequently, there was HALA certification demanded mainly by the Middle East markets. Even for this sector, we know that in the next years we will mo more work on sourcing responsibility, social responsibility and authenticity of finished products. In this uh, context, Sibel is already registered in the Olivo project for authenticity of fish oil. Returning to Friend of the Sea certification, compliance with this standard means setting up and adopting an approach that respects sustainability, social accountability, and best practices for energy efficiency. With the implementation of Friend of the Sea guidelines, Seabell, with its different industrial sites, contribute to mine conservation, gains new markets, improve its internal organization, and able to provide to consumers an accurate traceability system from the catching vessel to the final product, including process conditions. Before explaining how Seabell contributes in circular economy as fish meal and fish oil producer, let's present some aspects about byproducts, their definition, and possible ways of their valorization. In fact, there is no single definition of byproducts. In the past, fish byproducts were considered fish offal or waste. Later, these wastes were named co products, fish residues, waste streams. This definition has evolved with scientific publication. Recently, this biomass is named restaurant material or byproducts. Byproducts remains the most commonly used as its qualification is due to the fact that this byproduct represents an added value for the factory which generates them. In the past, these byproducts can be generated on board or onshore. Discards on board included non-commercial species, individuals below the legal minimum size, fish species of low commercial value, species without fishing quota, bycatch, damaged or in poor condition specimen, mortality in aquaculture during transformation on board. The amount and composition of these byproducts vary depending on the target species, fishing season, fishing gear and fishing area. In the past, these discards were not retained on board during commercial fishing operation and were returned to the sea dead or dying. Implementation of zero discard policy in European Union waters on 2015 obligated to find solutions to non-discard biomass. <coughs> on other hand, onshore byproducts can result from all aquatic food processing industries, including rejection at uh, slaughterhouses, fish sales ports, and fish farms. However, the largest quantities of marine byproducts are generated by fish processing industries. During food processing operations, large amounts of byproducts can be generated, including heat, viscera, skin, scales, bones or cartilage, tiles, blood, shells, hides, trimmings, and carcasses, as we can see on figure 5. Depending on the fishing period, reproductive elements like eggs, meat, or soft straw may be among these byproducts. These byproducts can up to 70% of the catch depending on the degree industrial processing. 
It's also estimated that quantities of byproducts generated by processing batteries will continue to increase due to the increasing demand for fishery products. According to Food and Agriculture Organization, one-third of world food production is lost through waste along the supply chain. Unfortunately, despite the expanding demand for fishery and aquaculture products and their importance to the food security of many populations, larger parts of the catch is wasted. In fishes and aquaculture sector, it's estimated that 35% of world's harvest is lost or waste each year. This percentage depends on areas. For example, in Europe, by products are used up to 54% of total production. That means in other areas of the world, large amounts and high percentages of byproducts are rejected and not evaluated. Analysis of composition of these byproducts has revealed richness in high added value molecules. They can be used to produce proteins with several choices like fish meal, fish protein hydrolysates, amino acids, bioactive peptides, or proteins. They can be used also to produce lipids, oils rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids, concentrated in three fatty acids, to produce enzymes, to extract natural pigments, or even to produce biodiesel and biogas. Knowing the properties of byproducts allows their valorization into highly valuable products that could be higher value than the fish fillets or the starter material. The finished product can be used in food, nutraceutical, and pharmaceutical preparations. I think we all agree that wastage of byproducts is a nutrient loss. The valorization of this biomass should be an obligation to ensure the world food security and to satisfy the growing demand for fishery products. Recovery of marketable products responds to an economic concern aimed at reducing or avoiding the wastage of these nutrients by creating additional income for the processing industry. But also a social issue by making food available in the markets, providing complementary source of nutrients, as well as improving food safety. In addition to these two aspects, there is the ecological challenge of producing sustainably by transforming the biomass into raw materials and contributing to preserve the resource, optimizing its use, and reducing the pressure on fishery stocks. If we come back to the example of seabed, and as you can see in figure 6, seabed uses 18% of whole fish against 82% of byproducts compared to the total raw material supply. Seabell has created Seabell 2 in Agadir to process only by products generated by fish factories operating around of its geographic area. Production of fish meal and fish oil from byproducts matches completely the goals of circular economy. Moreover, Seabell is engaged in prevention of waste, in the reuse and recycling of products and packaging, in conservation of biodiversity, in generation of income and employment, without forgotten reduction of greenhouse emissions. Moreover, if we compare the use of byproducts by seabed factories between 2005 and 2019, we notice that this percentage has increased from 31% to 82% against a decline in the use of whole fish, which has gone from 69% to 18% in 2019. This is a real positive development in view of circular economy, showing the gradual substitution of whole fish by fish byproducts in production of fish meal and fish oil. In addition to that, Seabed does a lot of work in conservation of byproduct quality. Byproducts are considered high value raw material. There are rules in place to recover and handle byproducts from their producers in accordance to food safety regulation. Processing conditions are also optimized to save nutritional qualities of finished products. It's also important to remember that Seabell prohibits the use of illegal and reported and unregulated fishing. Seabell companies use species which are sardina pell charges at 80% and scomper coleus at 20%. These two species are not overfished. They are classified less concerned by EUCN red list. Their fishery is managed by minister departments. There are rules on the catching, where catch is managed by individual quotas attributed to the fishing vessels. There is restriction on bycatch, and only less than 15% of fishing quota is allowed for fish and fish oil production. Also, there is no benthic or marine birds observed during the fishing of these species. For 
For information, you can check references used in this presentation. I hope that the content was useful for you and thank you for your time. Um, so the, the winner is the seaweed and algae, apparently, together with the uh, insect meal. And uh, according to our audience, uh, these are the two uh, um, areas of production and alternative to fish meal, which could uh, better um, uh, allow to reach the increase, the expected increase in demand till 2025. For the post interpretation, I agree with you, Mr. Paolo. It's clear that almost similar results were noted for seaweed and algae, and also for insects meal. In my opinion, and based on the current use of fish meal, which is mainly for feed and aquaculture, seaweed and algae could be a good alternative. Especially that alternative of fish meal has to have the same characteristics, high level of proteins with high digestibility, and also with an important intake of polyunsaturated fatty acids that we can find easily in seaweed and marine algae. So now let me see if there are some questions. So one of the questions, I will try to <clears throat> pass them over to, to the representatives of uh, Siebel. So one of the questions is, is the friend of this tea standard accredited or otherwise independently recognized? Yes, uh, I will reply to this. The answer is yes. In fact, we are the only standard in uh, certifying products from sustainable fisheries, which is uh, recognized by the national accreditation bodies. These are the state managed, state owned uh, bodies, which verify that uh, certification bodies and standards work according to the rules in an effective, professional, transparent and independent way. This uh, recognition is only being granted to very few other certifications worldwide, such as BRC, IFS, Global Gap for Aquaculture and Agriculture, and uh, other standards in fisheries don't have this level of recognition. So we have other questions. Uh, which are the other recognized agencies for certification apart from Friend of the Sea? As I said, uh, it is the only one in uh, certifying sustainable seafood from fisheries. And as far as seafood from aquaculture, the only one to our knowledge is Global Gap, which has the national accreditation. No other has the, can claim to uh, have national accreditation body recognition. Uh, and, and the national accreditation bodies are not checking over their uh, certification bodies. Another question, have total stocks of pelagics been reduced in general since the 70s? And if so, to what level and how quickly can they be allowed to recover? Well, pelagic is a very vast uh, um, definition which uh, would include also, for example, uh, tuna and, uh, and several others. So the answer is, is quite complex. Um, however, there have been uh, some uh, stocks which have uh, uh, gone uh, overexploited. Uh, the anchovy stock in Peru itself for a while has gone overexploited and then uh, good management has brought it back to a sustainable uh, level. Uh, we can produce uh, more detail about this to you. Um, in general, uh, the trend is one of improving management. And this has been clear also, for example, in the anchovy stocks in the Cantabic Sea, for example and in other areas and but some areas uh, in particular uh, uh, near in in, uh, in the in the pacific area uh, in the western pacific uh, uh, really have space for improvement in terms of management um, but in general awareness has grown uh, not only in pelagics management but in all managements uh, fishery managements and uh, this is leading to recovery uh, of these, uh, of these stocks. One should also remind that uh, in consideration of their uh, 
biology and life cycle, the um, small pelagics are more resilient to intense fishing and uh, can, uh, let's say, uh, relatively more easily uh, um, recover uh, with good and appropriate uh, fishery management. There was a question about uh, customers requesting evidence of uh, CBEL's engagement in certification. Uh, well, we have seen that uh, CBEL obtained uh, several certification and, uh, and yes, Mrs. Hind confirmed that uh, for some customers it's an obligation to be certified um, friend of the sea or other certifications. Do you see the contribution of fish meal from uh, byproducts to match the demand for expected growth trajectory of aquaculture, especially marine fin fishes in Asian region? Well, we I've, I've shown some data which uh, uh, somehow hint at the possible increase uh, in uh, production of fish meal uh, or a potential increase in production of fish meal from uh, byproducts of aquaculture and, uh, uh, and uh, fisheries. However, in some cases, obviously, there are technical uh, difficulties in uh, sourcing from these uh, suppliers because of the quality, because of the transportation and so on. Um, <clears throat> and so from the studies I have referred to also in my presentation, it seems that uh, um, this, uh, the production of byproducts uh, might not be able to match the total increase in demand to 2025, which is expected to be 500,000 tons. And uh, um, this is why uh, the, these studies have looked uh, at uh, alternative uh, fish meal origins, such as insects. Mrs. Hint might want to try and answer on the, on the chat. Thank you, Mr. Paolo. I will try to answer questions one by one. Let's start by the first, which was about 82% is unacceptable high. Why do you classify non-commercial species from catch as byproducts? Isn't this catching mistake that should be prevented? In fact, 82% is the current percentage of byproducts used by Seabell. Against only 18% of total supply is from the whole fish. Non-commercial species from catch are not classified by products. By products used by seabed results from fish processing industries like fish canning and fish semi-canning. In Morocco, there is a restriction on use of whole fish as raw material to produce fish meal and fish oil. The second question, what is the current percentage of products from trimming at seabed and what is the forecast for the future? The current percentage of byproducts from trimming at Seabell is 82%, all production plants included. View and Seabell opens a new plant in Dakhla to process only byproducts resulted from its scanning proce uh, processing uh, uh, units. The percentage of byproducts compared with the total supply will surely increase. Another question Are your customers requesting evidence of your engagement certification? Is it an obligation before buying? Not all, but several customers ask evidence of our engagement certification. It's also a condition to buy for customers who have purchasing policies in place, requesting certification and compliance to specific standards. Have total stocks of pelagic been reduced in general since the 70th? And if so, to what level and how quickly can they can be allowed to recover? Of course, if the overexploitation of marine fish stocks continues, the marine balance is under serious threat. The United Nations have defined sustainable development objectives which put in place actions for the management of fisheries in order to reconstitute stocks to maximum levels of sustainability. However, reconstituting 33.1% of overexploited stocks is a long process that can't be uh, taken a long time two or three times the lifespan of the species. But we have positive examples, as already explained by Mr. Paolo, 
about good management fisheries like uh, management of uh, anchovies in Peru where the maximum sustainability levels are achieved. Another question, what about the usage of byproducts from same species which can uh, which are farmed? Uh, do you use these trimmings in the feed? Is it uh, permitted? Seabed doesn't use byproduct from aquaculture because aquaculture in Morocco is not a developed sector and also because it's not allowed to use byproduct from same species which are farmed. The last question is in fact that 82% of all available fish is byproducts, an acceptable high. Catching non commercial species can be a result of bad fishing practices, as what rates of byproducts the certification will not be given. Again, 82% is the current percentage of byproducts used by Seabell, against only 18% of total supply is from the whole fish. Uh, this byproduct uh, results from the fish processing industries like fish canning and fish semi-canning. Moreover, in Morocco, there is a, a restriction on use of whole fish as raw material in production of fish meal and fish oil, uh, where the, the amount of catched fish allowed to be used in fish meal and fish oil sector is restricted to be less than 15% from the total fishing quota. If not, the fishing vessel loses its fishing license. Then there is a comment that definitely the most sustainable raw material for fish oil production is the byproducts from fish processors factories. But then the oxidation of the oil is challenging. Definitely uh, there are some uh, technical uh, issues. Not everything is feasible and uh, technologies are improving, you know, to approach also these challenges. I thank you very much for participating to the webinar and uh, I look forward to have you to the next webinar. Thank you.